Hey everybody and welcome back to more War Note. This is part 5. We're going to be running through the Army General tutorial today because next time we're going to be doing Army General. I'm skipping through the aviation ones for now. Uh, so we're just going to run straight into Army General. I mean, without further ado, let's dive into it. Um, thank you for all the support on the Warno series thus far. It's probably one of the better performing gaming series I've done on this channel. So General really happy about that. Has been issued. The Warsaw Pact has broken through. We need to reach the town as quickly as possible. Okay, sir. Army General lets you command Cold War era military formations on a massive strategic scale. Each unit pawn is the size of a battalion or equivalent. One day corresponds to five turns. Select the first squadron of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment by left clicking the mouse. As okay. indicated on its label and in the side information panel, this unit has 12 action points per turn. These are used to move and fight. Each action costs four action points. If a unit moves to the light squares, they can still start combat in the same turn. If a unit moves further to a dark square, they are unable to join a battle afterward. Seems simple enough. Access all the subordinate formations that make up a unit by clicking on the companies shown in the side panel. These are historically accurate. The icon indicates a unit's main role. In the case of the 111th ACR, it is a tank. Tank? Ooh, that sounds fine. Each unit in the Army General Campaign can be found within the overall military hierarchy via the Order of Battle menu. You can also locate the unit formation on the map by clicking the square icon next to the name in this menu. Take some time to familiarize yourself with the user interface. When ready, move the 111th ACR towards the objective with your mouse's right button. Okay, so let's look through the user interface. There's our battalion down here. We have five of them down here, it looks like. 19 attack, 17 defense. No fatigue and 12 action points. Let's go to the order of battle menu. We only have a sin tag right now. Just kind of. Yeah, this is actually very uh, in depth for a uh, tutorial. I mean, look at this. Just keep lowering the menus per se. So <laughs> that's fine. So Syntag, we have the 3 Corps, 32nd Air Defense Group, and the V Corps. We have one unit that is asleep right now. Alright, I think that's as good as we're going to get with the user interface. No schedule reinforcement right now. Um, your turn, so let's move to the objective right here. General, the 111th has been delayed. The squadron cannot reach Fulda immediately. And we only had 12 action points, and we used all 12. All its action points. It can no longer move or fight this turn. End your turn using the next turn button. The distance a land unit can travel depends on the terrain. Forests may slow down units, while roads allow for faster movement. You can change the speed of unit movements with the game speed button. Select and move the 111th ACR to Fulda. Okay, so let's use that. And let's move them to Fulda. You didn't follow instructions. Please try again. What? I moved it to one tile. Too far. General, the first squadron has reached Downs Barracks. The helicopters of the 411th ACR and 2nd Battalion of the 82nd Field Artillery Regiment are ready to join them. Move the 411th ACR to the objective. As a helicopter unit, it is not affected by terrain modifiers. I can just zoom zoom right over them, so let's move you over here. I want to left click, but it's right click. Move the 2nd Battalion. This is an artillery unit. They have different movement rules. Their 5 action points lets them travel more than 5 squares. However, 
If they still want to engage in combat, they can only move one or two squares in the same turn. You want to move right here. You can there you move go. several units simultaneously by making a multiple selection with a drag and drop while holding the left mouse button, followed by right clicking the mouse. Each unit will take the best possible route to reach its destination. Good news, General. All available units reached Fulda on schedule. We can now prepare for battlefield reconnaissance. Congratulations. You have learned the basics of Army General Unit Movement, User Interface, and Controls. The next tutorial will cover attacking and combat. Well, let's move on to the next tutorial then. We're only four minutes in, basically, so... General, it is confirmed. Warsaw Pact forces cross the inner German border. The enemy is advancing rapidly on our forward positions. Commit your forces without delay. We can send the 111th ACR to meet the enemy. Their scout units should be arriving in Hunfeld. Let's talk combat. To begin a fight, you must first see your enemy. Oh, if we don't see our enemy, it means they don't exist, which means we win. In Army General, all units can spot any enemy unit eight squares away. The red front line around Hunfeld shows that enemy units have recently been sighted there. Select the 111th ACR. Move your unit to the objective. It is on a light square. This means you still have enough action points to initiate an attack on an enemy unit during your turn. There we go. And we can see him. General, we spotted an enemy. But we haven't won Italian. immediately. Engage in combat immediately. Each battalion has a zone of control indicated by the hatched squares. This zone prevents enemy units from advancing closer. You can attack an enemy unit when your unit touches the enemy's zone of control and have four action points remaining. Left click on the enemy battalion to prepare for battle. Confirm you want to engage in combat by clicking prepare attack. Prepare attack. In the battle plan panel on the right, you can select the battalions you want to bring into combat. There is only space for one battalion in each category except for main combat battalions, which feature two slots. Main combat battalions are the only units that can initiate an attack. Other auxiliary types cannot start a combat, only provide support. You can find more details on each battalion's role by hovering over their slots. Add the 111th ACR to the battle plan by left clicking on one of the main combat slots or by right clicking on the unit's model in the campaign view. Empty a slot by right clicking it or on the in-game model. The preparation panel compares the sum of the attacker's attack values with the defense value of all visible defending units. The likely outcome of the battle is indicated. You can try to improve this outcome by resolving the battle yourself via the tactical battle button. For this tutorial, simulate the battle via the auto resolve button after adding your unit to the main combat slot. This lets the computer automatically resolve the battle. Let's do that. We have 19 power, they have eight. We're, we're gonna trounce them. Automatic or manual combat resolution calculates a ratio for each side. This ratio determines the outcome of the battle. This includes losses and fatigue suffered by all battalions involved. Losses result in an irreversible drop in attack and defense values. Despite a major victory, your unit's label shows that its values have dropped from 1812, which impacts a unit's combat effectiveness. Note that your 1 to 11th ACR suffers fatigue points despite its victory. Close the combat result panel. General, the enemy recon battalion is falling back. We can't let them get away. A battalion that suffers a defeat automatically retreats one square. Your 1 11th ACR is still in contact with the enemy's zone of control, but no longer has any action points available. End your turn. Your unit's fatigue gauge has dropped by one point. Each turn, all units recover one point of fatigue. As they have had time to reorganize, repeat the previous steps to destroy the enemy recon battalion. Okay, prepare attack. 
Let's right click you, auto resolve. And they're done. A battalion is destroyed when it suffers more than 70% losses, or if adjacent units prevent it from retreating. If a unit's fatigue gauge reaches 6, it will be disorganized. When disorganized, a unit loses its zone of control. It cannot attack, and any new attack results in its destruction if no allied unit can support it. Close the combat result panel. Repeated attacks on a powerful unit without giving it time to reorganize is a viable way to increase its fatigue and ultimately destroy it. Which is what we want. General, we destroyed the recon battalion. It would be wise to fall back on Fulda for the time being. Congratulations, you've mastered the combat basics in Army General. The next tutorial will cover defense. Three out of four we Sir, go. We have eliminated the enemy recon group. However, the Soviet vanguard is not far away. They will attack Fulda soon. What's more, HQ has informed us of multiple enemy aircraft in our area of operation. We must prepare to defend. The enemy is preparing to attack. The 111th ACR can be easily isolated in its current location. You must relocate. The urban area on the edge of Fulda will be an excellent spot to establish a defensive position. Select you. Units gain a defensive bonus depending on the type of terrain. When hovering over an in-game model, the shield below your cursor shows the modifier. This can range from plain, forest, semi-urban or urban. Move your unit to the objective. Okay, we're gonna move. The 111th ACR is now better positioned to resist an attack. All units supporting a friendly battalion, including air forces, will benefit from the defending unit's terrain bonus. Sir, the helicopters of the 411th ACR can provide strong and mobile support to our armored units on the ground. All battalions can support a defending unit if they stand close enough. Select your helicopter squadron. To be able to support an allied unit under attack, a unit must be in or adjacent to its zone of control. The unit must also have at least four action points at the end of the turn. Now move your squadron to the objective. Gotta say, these tutorials are very in-depth. I can barely get a word in edgewise. Just why you haven't really heard me say much, because, I mean, the game's been saying things for me. The helicopters of 411th ACR still have four action points remaining at the end of the turn. As an auxiliary squadron, they can come to the aid of the 111th ACR if the latter unit is attacked. Sir, the U.S. 3rd Armored Division came through. Additional artillery and air forces have been placed under our command. They will provide critical support in the coming battle. Artillery and aviation units follow different rules when attacking or defending. Select your artillery battalion. Select it, dang it. Artillery battalions can join the attack or defense of all friendly units within their fire support range, as indicated by the green circle. In order to do so, the artillery unit needs at least four action points. In the current situation, the artillery battalion doesn't need to move to aid your friendly armor during the enemy's turn. Select your air squadrons at the edge of the map. Select. Select the Air squadrons <laughs> are always located at the edge of the map. They feature four action points. An air unit's high speed allows them to take part in one combat per turn anywhere on the map. Sir, we suspect the enemy is preparing an air attack. We should set up our anti-aircraft defenses. Like other ground forces, anti-aircraft battalions can support friendly units in their attack or defense. Select your anti-aircraft battalion. Anti-aircraft battalions also have the strategic defensive ability to intercept enemy air units Click on the Deploy Anti-Aircraft button above the Battalion Information Panel. Of 
Deploy AA. There it is. Deploying an anti-aircraft costs four action points. The anti-aircraft battalion will remain in this defensive state until moved. A deployed anti-aircraft battalion will try to intercept any attacking enemy aircraft within its anti-air range. When the anti-aircraft ability is active during enemy turns, it has a chance to prevent enemy aircraft from taking part in one attack against an allied unit within the blue anti-air range. The ability also inflicts damage. Only specialized SEAD air squadrons are unaffected by anti-aircraft interception. We're ready to defend Fulda General. All available units are able to support the 111th Squadron in combat. Make ready, end your turn. Okay, so we're down to just one objective in this tutorial. As you can see, the location and remaining action points of your units allow them to participate in the following combat. Terrain bonuses are also displayed above the in-game models. Fill all available combat slots and select Prepare Attack. Can we use one of our air support guys? Yes, I can. The enemy must have Hooray. spotted your anti-aircraft positions as no air attack occurred. Oh, come if on! If any enemy aircraft were intercepted, the interception panel would have preceded the combat results screen. As you can see at the top of the panel, your use of combined arms of different unit types results in a negative modifier for the enemy. They only used one type of unit. Apply combined arms for additional combat bonuses. Sir, our defense was a success. We repelled the enemy. For the moment, Fulda is safe. Congratulations, you've mastered the basics of defensive combat. In the next Army General tutorial, we will further explain tactical battles, reinforcements, and victory conditions. And with that, let's go ahead and wrap up. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to our notification. We'll run through advance next time, and then we will be running into the first Army General campaign. We'll be Brutacree in the next episode, so that's going to do it. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.